What's going on YouTube? Derbador to Weldor here coming at you with another video. I apologize there's a little noise pollution but it's North Carolina and it's the summertime and you have to run fans to stay cool. So I apologize about the fan noise but y'all, those of y'all that don't like it just fine to get over it because if not there ain't no videos today. So today I'm going to be making a video. I've never done this before so bear with me. All right, this is my first go around in this, but I'm going to make my own line bore. I have attempted in the past and had good success building a test variant just to see if I could. And I have things a little bit more refined now, so I'm at the point where I feel like I can make a successful setup. So stick around guys, here we go. So, making a line bore really isn't that difficult. You need, all you really need for a line bore, right? is two barons on either side one baron on either side two barons total plates that those barons are on so they can be welded to whatever you're working on on either side the bore and then the bar that goes through the middle and some way to power it right there is a group on facebook i've been a part of for a little while and i've seen some great builds and it's amazing what you can do a lot of people use a mag drill and the reason i'm using a mag drill is because now the mag drill for me is a multi-purpose item the mag drill lives in the back of the truck i can drill stuff with it and i can pull it out and it can be my line bore power source and it's affordable a line bar is cheap a line bore powered by a mag drill is going to be way cheaper than going and buying a unit and it helps you get your feet wet with the system all right so my first line bore that I built, line bore bar, is this right here. This is a piece of 305 stainless rod that was a drop from a project that I wound up turning into a line bore bar. It works, except the stainless is so hard to work with, it is so hard to machine it makes this process miserable so i'm not going to make my next one out of stainless even though it is really nice and pretty you don't have to you can make your line bore bar yes out of cold rolled round i say cold rolled because cold rolled is going to be much straighter and it's going to be a lot it's going to be a lot straighter and a lot more true than hot rolled and it's going to be a little bit harder so you want cold rolled round mild steel at the very minimum that's like the lowest grade you should go with right and you know you can talk about we can get, you can get it chrome plated this that yada 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 hardened and all of that but not going to deal with that right now but to make this right here you can do everything on this bar except for making the three point shank, three flat shank here, or if your mag drill uses a three quarter weld on, making the three quarter weld on. You have to have a mill for that. Now you don't need a big mill. I have the equivalent of a of the Harbor Freight Mill. I have my little machine shop 3990, that's the exact model of mine, little machine shop mill and it does an outstanding job of doing stuff like this i also you need a mill for this and you need a lathe now you can you got a buddy from machine shop and you you do all this stuff right here drilling the holes and you take it to your buddy and go hey man i need a three-point shank or a three-quarter weld on on this any machinist with these basic tools will be able to crack that out for you real easy this isn't a complicated thing so Let's go over, I have the drawings of how I'm going to build my line bore, and we're gonna go over generation two. This is my second generation line bore bar and setup I've built. So the more work I do, the more I love having a whiteboard in the shop, just for going and just scribbling stuff down and having just a big drawing. So here we can see, this is my example. This is our excavator boom, we'll say, right? And we have the bore right here. There's the bar powered by our mag drill. And then we have bearing, bearing, plate, plate, right? It's not rocket science. Now we have our cross section. Every six inches on this bar. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make our shank. 
Then every six inches on this bar from the tip, from the end of the shank out, we're going to have a one half inch hole on center drilled, then 90 degrees to it, all on one side, have a 516-24 hole drilled and tapped in it, and that so we can slide our cutting tool in here and tighten it down. On the end, there's our three flats, 120 degrees apart. Now, this is what I like when I run machining. I like to draw out a procedure. So here we go. We have an inch and a half round bar that we're using, inch and a half round stock. So we need to mill back to our final diameter, 0.375. We need to come in with our cutting bit, 0.375, and, and lay that out back a 2.5 inches, 2.50 inches back before we do our 120 degrees apart on the mill. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this. And you can see here's my math right there. Stupid me had to draw it out to realize half of 1.5 is 0.75. But the complicated part of course is half of 0.75. Now the reason you have to, before you get on the lathe and start doing this, the diameter to the diameter that you're taking off, you have to divide that by two, is because you're taking off of both sides, essentially, as it's spinning around. So whatever you push in on the lathe, you're taking off twice whatever you push in, if that makes any sense. So that's why all the numbers are here, and it's all written down. I find machining is very procedural, and if you write out your procedure before you do it, you can get, usually get good results. That doesn't mean you don't have to halfway through kind of wing it to make it happen because that, that happens. So over here in this box is the line bore kit. How this is set up is I can take my line bore bars, put them in a truck, and Mag Jewel already lives in the truck. That's where, that's where it lives, it lives in the back seat of the truck. I can take this and my line bore bars, put them in the truck, and I'm good to go. I can go line bore. So, it's the kit. The kit consists of some things that all the links for everything in here, including the mag drill, is in the description of this video. So, we have dial indicator. None of this is like very expensive, high quality stuff. This is all Amazon stuff, which I've been doing a lot of machining with just Amazon stuff. And if you know what to look for and know what to get on Amazon, you can get some really good machining stuff on Amazon and not have to break the bank. Have a pair of calipers. These are very important. Very important to have calipers. Now in here, this is your bearings. Right here's one bearing. I like the four, the four bolt pillow block bearings. I just think these do better. I don't know how to exactly explain how I think they do better. I just feel like they stay steadier. We also have, this is the one inch. They're, they're pretty hefty bearings. And they are cheap and they're not exactly within spec. One of the first things we have to do with these, we actually have to machine these to spec so the bar actually slides through them. Right now, the butt, this won't even slide on the bar because they're actually 0.95 of an inch, they're not one inch, and the bar is 1.01 inches. So, it's, it's not gonna work. But you look at the size of this one right here, that block on this is almost so big, you could take bolts and run bolts through here, and all thread bolts, and stick this up against whatever you're working on, center, and weld the bolt straight to it. These are so big, but I don't believe in doing that. I'm actually gonna make plates because I want it to be, I wanna have some loose holes around it so I can actually move this around a little bit. I can get about a quarter inch or a .25 if you're a machinist. Up, down, left, right, all the way around. So I have a little bit of adjustment once I tack the plates on there. So I'm actually going to program something on the plasma table to cut these out. And I'm gonna use 3 8 plate. And the reason I'm gonna use 3 8 plate is because also, mag drill is going to have to have a plate it magnets to so it's going to magnet to a plate here and the bar is going to go through here so you have to have a plate thick enough to really lock that magnet onto the plate and if your plate not thick enough you don't get enough magnetization magnetization if that's even a word 
for it to stay on there like it's supposed to. Oh, and here we have our um, 516 24 socket screws, Amazon. Everything's in the, in the description. Have these clamps right here. I don't know exactly why I got these. I think the original plan was I was actually gonna drill a hole through the middle for it to, to brace tooling up against, like by to make a tooling extension or something. And come to find out, um, it winds up being, dang bug, it winds up being exactly half an inch in diameter, which is exactly what I'm using for my cutting tools. So it didn't work. I'm sure I'll find something to do with these. Probably use them in creating on my centering cones. I'm going to show you how to make some simple centering pads. But that all fits in here, in this box. Ta -da. Like I said, simple box, grab it, throw it in the truck and go. Now, if you are an actual machinist by trade, I apologize that I'm fixing to make you cry because I don't know what I'm doing. But bear with me, all right? I'm a welder by trade, not a machinist. So I will do whatever the hell I want. So finally, after realizing I had chucks two and three in the wrong spot, I'm able to get, get to working on this. So how I like to set this up is when I put the baron in here, um, I'm not a machinist, don't tell you what I have to say, but as fact, I don't like to put the Baron flat up against the back. I notice I put it flat up against the back, I'm stuck with whatever inconsistency this lathe has because it is a old as crap Chinese lathe. So, I'll bump it up forward just about a 32, just a little bit right there, lock it down. Now, I will take my dial indicator and run it through here to make sure this is concentric. That's a big word for me, concentric. So the goal of this, if you're unfamiliar, is to get this all lined up this away and this away to where this little dial indicator don't hardly move. And right now, because this is not exactly the world's best lathe, there's a little bit of movement. So what I do is I bring it until the needle goes all the way one way and tap the other side until it moves in the direction I need it to and I get it to where that needle's only moving at the most one tick or half a tick then lock it down with the vise and then go at it with my boring bit. So after one whole eternity later I finally have this bearing centered where it'll be concentric with the boring bar right here. So before you can make a line boring bar you have to do a little boring. Ha 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 ha. So we look at this bar here. It is, if I can hold everything. It is just a slight hair. It's just at a slight hair under over, depending on how tight I hold the caliper. 1.50 exact. Pretty good for cold roll. However, when we go over here, this bearing is not. It is 1453. So it is not 1.50. So that bar will never fit in here unless we do a little boring first. Also decided before I got too far, I'd add a little danger zone mark on there so I don't crash my lathe. Which if I crash it, it'll be the first time I've ever crashed a machine. So that'll be pretty cool. <laughs> 